Hi everyone, Kathy Beltran with Wings and Whispers. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are starting step six in creating the angel wings behind me, which are made out of cardboard. So if you're just coming on to this um, episode, definitely go back and you can catch up. We are starting our gesso, our preparing of our painting surface. By now, you should have your three pieces um, shaped, taped, and machined are ready to go. Everything completely dry. I actually have mine here. They're not put together, so I'm going to have to hold them up. I've actually started, I've actually finished the gesso already. So here's, I'm holding that really good. So there's that. They've come out much farther than I, I wanted them to, and you'll see how um, this neck part pops out. So I have all three done, thank goodness. But I wanna share the steps in doing that and the tips that I have for you. So first, you might wanna have like an apron on, something to protect your, your clothing. Um, and definitely roll up your sleeves. Um, I have a, a, a roll that I've already pre-cut for like half of my um, dining room table. If you're going to work all three of your layers, both front and back, or painting both front and back, then you're gonna to wanna to be able to put that big piece on something. So I typically have this and ready to go on my dining room table if I'm not working in the garage. You will need paper towels, some water, your gesso. You can find this in any of the craft stores. You can find it at Walmart. You don't have to buy this huge size. This will last me for a long time, but they smell smaller sizes, sell smaller sizes. Um, a little tin or some a bowl or something to mix it with your value brushes whatever size you want to use I just use the one inch and I also have here some white paint so we will talk a little bit more about all the different paints that you can use so I'll move this out of the way so when um, you're mixing this you want to make sure you're reading the directions so it's mine is pretty thick in here so I kind of scoop it out with just my brush I'm, if I'm planning to paint everything, I might just bring it up to maybe a, a third to half of the way with the gesso. And you'll want to read the directions because it talks about adding water to thin it out to the consistency that you want. Typically when I do it, I for my first layer, and I do three layers of the gesso on the wings on each of the layers, I will start out with my first and I'll add just enough water to mix it up really good. When I do my second layer, I'll still have this. I might cover it with um, saran wrap or something when things are drying. Um, I definitely always wash the brush in between each of those things when I'm waiting for dry times. The second layer, I might add just a little bit more water and then third, you might have to add more of this. It really depends on how much you added in the beginning. So um, what I typically do is I start with the base layer and I'm going to pull that out. I'll do this side. I'll make sure to get all the edges. Make sure I get in there in the corners as well because you will be painting everything. And then I'll get to the back and I'll do that. But I don't wait to do one side and let it dry. I just kind of, I'll paint this side, I'll lift it up, tilt it, and then I'll do the other side because I've already, I already know that I've done all these edges up in here. And so I'll just carefully grab it and lay it on the table. I might prop it up with, I have a bunch of these, and prop it up right here so barely anything is touching. So you'll want to do that to the main body, front and back. So this is something depending on if you're going to, how you're going to hang it or display it. So I typically make sure to cover front and back on and do my two to three layers. When I get to my second layer, I will again do the same thing. I'll make sure on this front side of it, I'll make sure to put two or three layers. On the back, the, remember the tissue's white, the gesso that I bought is white. So I believe you can get gesso that's clear. But 
So I just add one layer to the back because really there's certain areas that you're not going to see and there might be certain areas that you end up feathering and painting on certain areas of it. But when you place it on top of your main piece, you know, you're going to be able to see what people might see looking at it from different angles. So I do the same thing on the third piece. I'll put two to three layers on the front and maybe one on the back because again, depending on how you shaped it, you may be able to see certain areas that you might have to paint. So that is definitely what you're going to be doing for your step six is making sure to prepare all your layers with at least two to three coats of the gesso. Now, if you don't want to, or you don't have any gesso, um, you can just go ahead and use regular white craft paint, um, acrylic paint, um, chalk paint, whatever you have. Um, definitely, you could even do this on the backs if you wanted to. So depending on how the gesso covered up the back, I might have to come back in on the main body piece with a white um, layer after the gesso. So you'll definitely want to do that. Work it in, um, you know, bits and pieces. But at the end and you're done with your gesso, if you have any leftover in your, your container, don't put it back in your bin because you've already added water to it. So you don't want to ruin the gesso that you have. So I typically just wash these things out and I'm very careful with how much gesso I need. I'd rather have less with added water um, that have to, you know, and then add more to it later than having a bunch that I waste. So that's a great tip there. So definitely use your value brushes here and in between dry times, if you're not going to use it, definitely wash your paintbrush. So this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about the next um, step, which is seven. That's where we start to paint our feathers. So I wanted to share a little bit more about some paints that I will probably be using. I have so many different types of chalk paint and acrylic paints, but I want to show you some here. So, and I try to put them in order. I will be working on in the next couple of days a, uh, a different angle. I'm going to hopefully have a camera here so that you can see um, the painting technique to practice on as well. So typically I have, I'll give you some of the names of the chalk paint that I have. I use mineral, silver lining, elephant, black, yeah, it's ink, and the white chalk paint. So I typically use, have a lot of this and I have other colors and it really depends on what you want your, your angel wings to look like. I also have different folk art and yeah, I think it's Americana paints, all acrylic. A lot of them have like a bronze finish, different golds. I'll have some darker ones. It depends on what I want to do with it. So some people may just want to have white wings. So that'd be great if you want. You'll have the three, three pieces and then you'll do your gesso. Or if you don't have gesso, you could just paint all of them white and then you'll have to wait until we get to how to put it all together um, and do the finishing pieces after that. So that's totally up to you, but these are the things that I have that I'm gonna be using. And, um, and another thing I want to tell you is if you were to make two of these, no set of angel wings are gonna be exactly the same. You might use the same colors, but because of the way they're shaped um, and molded, they're going to be completely different. As you get used to the type of brush strokes that we're going to do with the fan brushes, you know, um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting and you'll have fun doing it. And again, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that even if you finish painting, like if I wanted to redo this one, all I would have to do is paint it white, just sew it again, and restart it if I didn't like those colors anymore. So um, it's just going to be fun to do this, but this is step six. You need to prepare all three of your layers with your gesso, wait for them to dry at least two to three layers, and then when you're done with that, you'll be ready for step number seven. So for now, I wish you a great day um, preparing your surfaces, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.